Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel, where we're doing a quick mesh-tastic project. This might end up being rolled into a longer video about mesh-tastic, but this is just one project in particular that I'm working on. I've taken my old uh, LilyGo TT... Uh, I think this is a TT Go. Um, I always forget the names of these things, but I've already started taking this thing apart. I've taken the circuit board out of it. And yes, this is a TT Go module, so... Um, this is one that one of the Meshtastic folks gave to me at Open Sauce last year. I've used it before. It's always been a little flaky. They don't actually support this device anymore because it's got some issues. They sent me a custom firmware for it that kind of works. So any issues I have with the hardware should not reflect poorly on Meshtastic at all because I really badgered them into letting me use this. Anyway, I've taken it out of the 3D printed case. I've taken my little solar charger that I got from Amazon, and I've started doing some surgery on that. Normally this comes with a little battery box molded into the plastic here. I've kind of cut that out so that I can push the battery over slightly, and that gives me room to cram the TTGO circuit board in here, and then I think close up the case again with everything inside. Now, I want the antenna to stick out, so I've got to drill a hole in it here, and then we'll need to actually hardwire this into the charging circuit so that it can run from the battery and the solar panel. All right, I've drilled my hole. I'm not going to show that. You guys know what a drilling a hole looks like. I'm going to jam the antenna through here. Only the finest of precision tools being used here. Also using some precision hot glue to hold the battery in place. Also hot glue all over the antenna zone to just keep water out of there. Now I'd like the antenna to stick up vertically past here, and it's uh, it's close, but it's not ideal. So I'm actually going to put another little antenna extender here. I think I've got some of those in here um, somewhere. At first I wasn't sure why this connector exists. Why go from female to male. It, you're going to the same thing that you're starting as, but if you just need an extra little bit of space, this actually works. So now I have a solar power bank with a built-in mesh node. I don't know if it works yet. The battery is dead, so we're going to have to set it outside in the sun. and We'll see A, does it charge? B, does it turn on the mesh node? And then C, does everything actually work kind of unattended? Because the idea here is that I could just leave it somewhere and it will function without babysitting, which is always kind of a hassle with some of these mesh nodes. I've been playing around with this thing some more. The little internal battery on here is 3.7 volt, and it's actually outputting around 4 volts, which is probably within the right range. It has about the same voltage on this part here when the solar panel is plugged in, when it's charging. The solar panel itself is actually putting around 6 to 7 volts into the charge controller, so then that's getting stepped down for the battery. Either way, it should be working for this little guy, but this thing just does not want to boot up, so I think there might be something wrong with this, and it has had trouble when I've tried to use it remotely before, so um, I think maybe we've got to throw this in the junk bin and try some other device. So I bought this thing a while back and honestly kind of forgot about it. I meant to put it in one of my Cyberdex or Raspberry Pi quarter, but let's go ahead and use it for this. It's basically the same form factor. It's just a little um, system on a chip here. So I think it should fit in the same case. It'll use the same antenna connector, the same power connector. It should just be a drop-in replacement. Right off the bat, this is working much better than the other one. I think I might still have to flash the Meshtastic firmware onto this. All right, I want to do some basic setup on the node. Uh, the local mesh here in MSP has all switched to medium fast because we got to be too many people for long fast. I think I'm going to leave this one on long fast because I have another use in mind for it. The Heltec is a little fatter than that Lily TT Go. I actually had to remove the screen and it seems to still work even without the screen, so I've got it all wedged in here. I'm going to button this all up, and then hopefully we have a solar mesh node that I can just leave somewhere and not have to mess with it again. I can mount it this way on a pole facing south, or I can just set it on something. Um, this is pretty lightweight, so if I set it on a rooftop or out on a rock or something, it would probably blow away. I might want to put some kind of mounting hardware on the back. Originally, this did have a tripod mount on here, but I filled it with hot glue when I was using this for something before, so I might have to rig something else on here as a mount, but I'm just going to leave this outside and see if it keeps working uh, overnight and whatnot. 
I'm still looking for a cheaper option for a droppable breadcrumb node. I went to Axeman Surplus and I got a couple solar panels. This is from like a little garden light and it was just 75 cents. Uh, this one is a more substantial panel. It looks like this one will do uh, one watt at about six volts. So uh, that one was five bucks. And then I can't remember if I showed this before, but I got a rack whisk block on Amazon. And this guy is tiny and I think these are supposed to be pretty low power draw. So I'm wondering if I can stick this inside something like this or inside of a little enclosure with the other uh, solar panel here and have a, a really tiny uh, solar node. And this also comes with some antennas and whatnot. All right, so our garden solar panel has just a little charge controller and just a double A battery. Boy, that node almost fits in there. It fits dropping stuff on the floor. It fits just perfectly uh, between the two sides of this battery holder, but there's a switch in the way. I'm a little disappointed. The WizBlock kit here has a million little antenna connectors, but no power connectors. So I'm gonna have to go round up the tiny, tiny little power connectors that uh, go onto the board here. Now I could have sworn I had some of those fiddly little wires somewhere in one of these boxes of electronics, but I know I bought some of those and I had this whole stupid cupboard organized, but I don't know where I put them. I finally found some of those tiny bastards. I think that's the official name for these connectors. Found another whisk block module in my junk drawer. And this one has a battery. This is actually a much bigger battery than that AA rechargeable that was in the little uh, solar garden lantern. So I also found an enclosure, also from Axeman Surplus, 95 cents. So if I can get this together, um, I think these are about $30 now, so 35 It'll be worth under $40, which is, is approximately disposable for me. That could be a node that I leave somewhere. Everything seems to fit in here nicely. This enclosure isn't waterproof, though, so once I have it assembled, I'll probably just put some goop all around the seam. So that's pretty much done. I wired in a switch here onto the battery wire so I can just turn the whole thing on and off, and I'll just I'll probably waterproof the heck out of the inside of the switch, so hopefully that keeps everything... Uh, environmentally sealed to some extent. And I stuck the sticker on the back that came with it, so I probably should have kept that sticker for my own stuff, but we'll put it on here. And that way, when I go through the TSA and they ask, uh, what is this stupid thing? I can tell them to look up uh, Rockland. And this isn't the smallest design. I, I was hoping for something like a solar panel that just sits on the enclosure here and makes it really tiny, but this was the panel I found, and I haven't gotten that other solar light one to work yet, so... Yeah, um, may or may not bring this out somewhere and leave it remotely, but uh, for now let's take it outside and just test it, make sure it stays charged and see if it lasts overnight. I'm still kind of hoping I can fit the whole thing into this uh, solar light fixture, but the little whisk block node is just a little bit too wide. But I also don't need this, like, half centimeter of space on this side. So when working with delicate electronics, you should only use the finest and most appropriate tools for the job, like a bench grinder. There, the board is just a little smaller now. I don't know if this is a first. I'm sure somebody has done something this stupid before. Actually, I think I forgot to flash mesh tastic onto there. So before I start hot gluing everything together, I'd better do that step. All right, so here is my Tiny mesh node. It's even got a little stand on the back so you can just set it on the ground facing south. Does it work? That's the main question. The battery in here is dead, so I'm going to have to set this in the sun for a while and see if it'll actually charge it up. Might need to put a new battery in it too. All right, I've had this thing charging all day out in the sun and it's not working. So I think this little battery is either dead or just not big enough. So gonna see if I can cram in an actual uh, lithium rechargeable battery instead of the double A. If we can't fit it in here, I do have another little Axeman enclosure that might work. All right, I pretty much gave up on the solar light aside from the panel, and I just went ahead and used that other enclosure. So this fits the battery and um, the little node in there. We've got the extra antenna. I don't know if this panel is going to be big enough to charge that battery. So 
Uh, I'm not going to seal it all up completely just yet, but this is so far the smallest one I've been able to come up with. So far we have three cheap solar nodes. The one on the left is made with that power bank and the Helltech with the screen removed. That one cost about $50 for all the equipment. The one in the middle with the Axeman solar panel and the Wisp block cost about $45 for everything. I had to buy a battery for that. I had the new antenna, the solar panel, and then the node. The one on the right is actually just under $40. I did have to buy a battery for that, but I'm using one of the antennas from the other kits. Now, how do they work? The one on the left, the big power bank, that works great. That makes power all day. That has extra power. So if you wanted to uh, have this at your campsite and power a phone or another device from it, it would work great. The one in the middle keeps up with itself and it uh, recharges itself during the day so that one seems like it would be a good long-term long-lasting node now the one on the right is questionable it seems like it hovers around 75 percent battery power at all times and during a nice sunny day when it's got clear skies and constant sun Maybe it gets up to about 76, 77 percent, but then by the next morning after it sat out all night, it's down to 70 or 71 percent. So it never really seems to make power. It seems to just barely keep up with the rack whiz block in there. And I think a couple cloudy days would kill it. So that one on the right is maybe not the best node, but these other ones seem like they'd be great for camping or if I wanted to leave one of these somewhere unattended. I think that might be an interesting idea, and maybe we'll do that. So let's see if I can come up with a really interesting place to leave one of these unattended. Mesh node is going right here. It's kind of a protected spot in the rocks. South facing, it's even angled a little bit towards the sun. So this is going to be the Meshtastic breadcrumb node, and it is being left somewhere, somewhere in southeast Alaska. We've got uh, ocean exposure. Now, if anybody can find this node, you're welcome to have it. You can just keep it. Um, if you come across it, it has no password. And I'm just going to leave it here, and we'll see if anybody finds it. We'll see if anybody connects to it. Well, I guess we won't know if anyone connects to it, because I'm probably the only other mesh node around. But, uh, yeah, this is the off-grid, very off-grid Meshtastic breadcrumb. We've confirmed the node is working with the T-Deck and on Bluetooth, so it should be ready to leave it here on this island. I went ahead and packed a few more rocks around this thing just to keep it in place better in case there's any heavy wind. So I think it's going to be staying here for a while. All right, and we are still seeing the thing from quite a long ways away on the boat here. So it is the only mesh node for probably 20, 30 miles, maybe 50 miles. It's the only mesh node for a long way. So it is working though. That's cool. So I guess this is both an experiment and a bit of a treasure hunt. This should be visible to passing cruise ships, so if you're on a cruise through southeast Alaska and you use Meshtastic, keep an eye out for Meshtastic breadcrumb. The GPS coordinates should be pretty accurate, so it should tell you where it is. And then if you happen to be visiting the spot where this is located and you find it, well, you're welcome to have the thing. If you have seen this video and you do come across this thing, whether or not you live or have a cabin in the area or whether you're completely new to the area. Either way, I would love to hear about it. So leave me a comment down below or shoot me an email. For everyone else out there, I hope this was kind of an interesting video and maybe gives you some ideas for low cost, unattended mesh nodes. Thanks to everyone for watching and we'll see you next time.